Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be answering something that people have been asking me for a while. How do you use a flight simulator for real world training? And now the first things first before I get anywhere with this video, I need to say immediately that a flight simulator does not replace real world training. Now I've flown both in the real world, I've got my license, I've also flown a considerable amount in the flight simulator and I can tell you right now that no matter what you do in the sim, when you get in the real plane, it's just different. It's more visceral, it's bumpier, the forces are so much higher on the controls, it's just so much. The noise, the pressure, the lack of visibility, it's just, it's a lot that the simulator just does not capture properly. I mean, if you look at my image right here, that sky looks perfect. It just doesn't do that in the real world. Also, that tower is not that big in Danbury. It's just not, no, no. <laughs> so the other thing too, is I wanna say is, uh, before I get too far with saying, don't use a simulator, it's worth noting that certain types of simulators can be used in flight training. Uh, the catch there is they have to be approved simulators and they also have to be done with a certified flight instructor. Now, for those of you doing IFR training, uh, you're probably very familiar with these because it's a lot cheaper to use the $35 an hour simulator than the $200 an hour airplane. But it's also worth noting that people who do ATP training, like for 737s, they're not gonna let you borrow a 737 to get your airline transport pilot. It's expensive. So instead they do all that training almost exclusively on a simulator. So it's kind of neat to see how that works. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go through six items here and I'll kind of show them to you a little bit as I go so that you understand how it works. Let's do it. So first things first, and uh, this is the thing that I think is really important, is simulators are great at teaching procedures. Now, the reason I say that is a lot of the aircraft that are very, very well simulated will have procedures that are almost exactly the same as their real world equivalents. Uh, for example, you know, if I come in here and get real comfortable inside this plane, I'll go ahead and do an engine shut off immediately, cut the power, you know, shut all my battery switches off, you know, kind of go through the full motions here, killing my lights and everything like that. Wow, this thing was lit up like a high mass, holy smokes. Now, if I were to grab my actual Cessna 152 POH and pull it out and actually go through it step by step to get this plane started, the plane would start exactly the same way. Actually, <laughs> the real world plane never starts this easy, but it would actually give me a chance to try and find each button. Now, one thing that's cool about the flight sim is you got this thing here that kind of walks you through some of this. We're missing about two thirds of the items that you would normally go through. But the reason this is so cool is I can actually go through it procedurally feel what it feels like before I get in the real plane. So let's go ahead and just do a quick start. Uh, mixture rich, all right, mixture rich. Uh, carburetor heat cold, carburetor heat cold. Prime as required, not gonna be needed. Uh, throttle, open one half of an inch. Perfect. Master switch is gonna come on, the master switch is <laughs> Ignition start, on the real world, this should say propeller clear. So in, like again, I can practice the real world. You know, if I could open this window or the door, I'd stick my head out and say clear prop. Again, I'm simulating exactly what I do in the real world. Uh, clear. So I come here, I put my hand on the stick, I put my hand, I was gonna say, I put my hand on the key, I put my hand on the throttle, crank it. And when it catches, I do this. And then the next item, adjust RPM for 1,000 or less. Let's go ahead and give that a little push. Looks like our fuel is being cut out because uh, I missed a procedural item. No! But again, the fact that it would catch that and actually not work because of that is a great way to reinforce exactly what you're doing in the real world. Now, if you're dealing with very, very complicated aircraft, this is just a great way to kind of do some of these items. So then we can go through all the other different procedures. Like I said, I got my RPM looking pretty good. Oil pressure's coming up and all those things will be simulated. It's gonna be different than it is in the real world. It really will be. But you can still go through the motions of pushing the buttons, pushing the handles, kind of grabbing it. And when you're in VR, things get even better. Now, the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is a really important one, in my opinion, the best use of flight simulators. And that is navigation. One of the best things a flight simulator can be used for is practicing the art of navigating a plane from one place to another. Um, flight simulators are uniquely capable of simulating so much of it. And now that flight simulators are starting to have scenery that is getting very, 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 very realistic to what you see in the real world, it suddenly becomes possible to do entire cross-country flights and actually be able to see what you expect with the weather conditions you want at the speeds and at the times that you want. In this case, I've just taken off from uh, Western Connecticut and Danbury, and I'm gonna start making my way towards Hartford, Connecticut. Now, if I pulled out my actual sectional chart, I can even pull out my EFB, and you know, I can fire up ForeFlight or you know, iFly or something like that, and actually follow along and pretend as if I was flying this with a normal one. You know, I got my stopwatch on my left leg, on my right legs, got my kneeboard with each one of my points here. Uh, my first waypoint is gonna be that lake coming up. Um, I'm supposed to be hitting that in about 45 seconds. I can simulate every aspect of this and actually feel what it would be like to fly this particular flight as if it was a real one. 
Now, when I was in flight training, the cross-country section was pretty scary because you were, had so many wind variables. You know, you look out the window, keep in mind, in the real world, your visibility doesn't look like this. <laughs> I've said this comment a million times. But, you know, if I open it up, you know, eh, this is what it looks like in the real world. And it's not quite that bad, but that's what your visibility could look like typically during the summer. You get something like this. So being able to get to your particular destination using these kind of conditions and everything taking the same amount of time and using the same, oh, not my case, using the same power settings, uh, using the same radio settings, all that stuff is tremendous as far as improving your piloting skill. You know, learning to dance between, oh no, I'm starting to lose some altitude and looking down at my leg, you know, taking a look at the map and I'm looking over the lake. Oh, I'm supposed to be on the north side of the lake. I'm down here on the south side of the lake. Oh, what's that gonna do? Oh, I'm 15 seconds early. And being able to work all of those things out in real time is going to make you a better pilot, even if you already have your license. It's one of those things where like, it, it cannot be understated how valuable it is using a flight simulator for the purposes of practicing navigation. Now, if you have something like an automatic pilot, you could even set everything and forget it and then use your navigator skills to predict how long is it gonna to take to get here? How much fuel is it gonna to take to get here? Um, what is the crosswind component? What is the wind component? Being able to actually do all that and seeing its impact directly inside the flight simulator is tremendous. And it's one of those things that literally, is, if I had to pick one, that would be the one I'd probably pick as far as the most valuable skill you can get as a private pilot from the flight simulator. Now, the next one is something I use as a regular private pilot. The next item that I find very, very valuable, and this is tied in with the navigation, is getting familiar with unfamiliar airports. Now, in previous version of flight simulator, airports were not simulated very accurately. I mean, there's actually still quite a bit of inaccuracies, especially with things like taxiways. But the difference here is if I'm doing a cross-country flight in the real world, not only can I practice the art of dead reckoning my way and calculating almost to the minute or even second how close I'll be in the real world, is I now have the ability to see what an airport looks like. So not only can I see it like as is like it is now, but now with a quick press of a button, I can see exactly what that airport is gonna look like in the middle of the night. So you know what, I'm, first of all, this airport does not look like this in the middle of the night. I will admit to that. However, I know what I'm looking for now. Everything's just dark at night, I'm sorry. But this makes it great because now I can sit here saying, okay, which runway is this? Is this the short runway? You know, I can't see this other runway here. What is my orientation to this? So if I'm landing at this particular airport at night, I know what I'm looking at, you know, versus, you know, I'm landing at this at eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's runway two. So that must be the runway we're going to be using because my predicted wind is going to put me on this particular position. Now, knowing all those things together, I can't tell you how many times I've traveled to other airports around the, you know, the different parts of the country in the real world that I always would come and I'd fly the landing for, even though I knew that the real simulator landing is not gonna improve my landing skill, it's going to give me comfort, uh, comfort with knowing what I need to do at that particular airport for the purposes of procedures. Like for example, you know, I've got my runway two here. That's one thing I love about the OSS 180, 152 here. You can do really, really, really dangerous approaches and the aircraft is like, what else would you like me to do today? And I just love that about this aircraft, but anyway. There we go. <laughs> so if we were doing ourselves a normal landing, not my little stunt land. Again, try that in a bonanza. You can't do it. You know, if I look down at my electric flight bag, I'm like, oh, okay, so I've just landed right here. Which taxiway am I going to have to use? All right, they're probably going to send me off in that taxiway. So again, let's go ahead and uh, do some uh, ground handling here and get us onto the taxiway. And then I can look at a real world taxi diagram and say, okay, so if I'm here, where are they likely going to send me in order to get to my specific location? Let's say I'm heading up north, like you know, uh, the jet center or something like that. I can now say, okay, they're probably gonna make me take a right on this taxiway, and then I'm gonna follow it down here, and then I'm gonna take a left towards the end. And just going through the motions of that and playing with it with an actual chart is going to be amazing when you have to fly to this particular location for the first time. Again, thank you for the scenery being so accurate. This is not accurate, however. None of those are correct. I wish they'd fix that, and I'm sure at some point they will. Now, the next item that the flight simulator is extremely valuable for is practicing instrument flying. 
Now, one of the interesting things is, in the United States at least, you're actually able to log a certain number of approaches being simulated and still count them as actual real-world approaches. Now, keep in mind, you can't log those approaches on a non-approved simulator. Um, what I'm using right now, uh, that is not an approved simulator. Uh, this is just my home simulator. But it doesn't mean that I can't sit here and do every single aspect of an instrument approach as if I were flying it in the real world. In this case, uh, we have an ILS into a run runway 33. You know, uh, we can pretend that, you know, they line me up to a certain point. I see I'm getting a little below glide slope. Um, my flight instructor used to always call it playing the video game. I need to come to my left quite a bit more. And again, I picked this one uh, pretty much at random. It's just kind of an example. So we'll aim kind of this way for a while. And we'll kind of catch up to the glide slope. The fact that you can sit here and learn the basic procedures of keeping the aircraft steady during this approach at the same time as flying the approach, at the same time as uh, working on your communication skills all at the same time, is going to make you a fantastic instrument pilot. The more time you spend sitting here in this dust trying to center needles, maintain specific speeds, attitudes, angles, flying into approaches that you will never get to fly to, or maybe flying into an approach that you expect to see on a flight test, is going to make you a better pilot. Now, one of the things that's absolutely crazy about this is I can fly any instrument approach on Earth here. I mean, I can fly this instrument approach, which, you know, normally I probably would not be flying in a Cessna 152. It's not to say you can't fly this instrument approach in a Cessna 152. It's just to say you're probably not going to fly it, because as you can see, I'm getting wrecked by the wind here. <laughs> it shows you that I need to spend some time flying my instrument approaches. But again, learning to do your instrument scan, learning to get your speeds under control, learning to center those needles, learning not to get fixated, just forcing your brain to do that as much as possible with as many different scenarios as possible is going to be one of the greatest things that you could transfer right to the real airplane. Yeah, the real airplane is going to be quite a bit more visceral. It's going to be noisier. You know, you're going to have to be a lot more precise with the different handling of the different components. But the reality is the fact that you have to constantly zip between each one of those instruments, the actual physical brain mechanism of not letting yourself get distracted too much by one instrument or another is the secret to instrument flying. And it's one of those things that maybe you haven't done it a lot recently, but the fact that you're sitting here in the simulator trying it, even though, yeah, you're probably maybe using a joystick instead of a yoke and you're not getting bounced around by the turbulence is going to work wonders for you as far as uh, mastering the individual skills involved. Like I finally got this thing stable. It helped if my original approach was stable, but as you can see, it was anything but. <laughs> I know you're probably sitting here saying we are get to, we get to see the final landing, right? We get to see the final landing, right? But the problem is that when I initiated this approach, I was just a little far away. And unfortunately I'm getting right back on the glide slope again. But again, now you can see that I have not been keeping up on my instrument flying. It's legal and all that other stuff, but it's, uh, it does not look very smooth. And unfortunately, this airplane is not the best airplane for this. Now you try doing this in like a nice modern military fighter or something like that. Oh man, that is a fun times. The good news is the entire approach takes a couple of seconds. And it's worth saying here too, that in the simulator, unlike the real world, it didn't take me 45 minutes of radio communications to be able to do this approach. I simply pressed the slew button, lined myself in, dialed the frequency, put the plate up on my left leg, and now I'm able to fly the entire approach without having to go through all the hassle of dealing with things like having specific weather patterns or you know having to deal with traffic or the fact that you know it's a little teeny tiny plane and I'm asking to fly you know into an international airport kind of a thing like that we don't have to do any of that we can just sit here and run it all the way down uh, one thing I'm very curious with at this point though is to see just how not lined up I am <laughs> this is more for me oh I'm doing fine <laughs> so again instrument approaches great use for the simulator so the next one is another great use for the simulator, and that's dealing with emergencies. So let's say, you know, you want to simulate an emergency in a real plane. Some emergencies we can't simulate because it's too dangerous to simulate. But in the flight sim, I can go Get some switch. Oh, oh, now my engine's broken. What am I gonna do? So now you're able to go through the entire motions and like you can do incredible things like pausing. Well, in the real world, I can't do this, but oh, look at that major international airport right there. I guess that will be my target. Of course, the real question is, uh, why are my flaps in the wrong position? I can tell you why. It's called making the video. So then we can go ahead and go through the entire mental motions of what would I do? Um, who would I contact? You know, what procedures would I utilize? What speeds would I hit myself at? You know, would I try experimenting with this? How many circles can I make per thousand feet lost? You can test all of these different... <laughs> I see you're landing where I was landing there. 
you're able to test all these different items all together and still be able to not have to worry about, oh, I think we're done with the emergency. Let's go ahead and start her up. And look at that, all my instruments come back to life. And then we can go ahead and continue our flight without any sort of drama whatsoever, which is an incredible concept if you think about it, because we can't do that in the real world. And it allows you to build up that extra confidence that you need. Now, the final thing that the simulator can help you with that translates into the real world is something that you need an external tool for. Depart and that is practicing communication skills. Now, I will admit, I am not the world's best radio operator. You know, I just, I don't have enough experience like people who's done this for 1,500 hours that are able just to crank out the most complicated things or remember everything that's told to you. But one of the great things with Flight Sim is we have things like VATSIM and IVAO and all of these different communities that will create virtual air traffic controls so you can experience the process of making calls Obviously, there's going to be some liberties taken here, things like the fact that you have the top-down approach. You know, if I go to a certain airport, maybe the approach controller is also controlling the tower and the ground and everything like that. But there are airports that have full control all the way down to clearance delivery on up. Now, the reason this is incredible is if you get something wrong, there's no broken laws here. You're going to annoy some people, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, the incredible thing is just the built-in communications here. You know, I'm coming here. I have my ATC and everything like that. We'll go ahead and do an illegal takeoff here. Whee! <laughs> Unfortunately, when you slew the aircraft, it does not inherit any speed. So as soon as you unpause, you tend to uh, stall the plane out. But one of the cool things now is I can simulate all. Ask me for frequency trains. I can go practice all of my different communication pieces here. So again, I can say nearest airport list. I can go ahead and say Danbury. I can go ahead and say I'm requesting a full stop landing. And then I can go through the motions of making that specific request. I'm one mile to the north 1600 with Oscar to land. And then go ahead and go through the full motions. Now, can you enter a left downwind into runway 26? And then as my handy dandy pilot skills goes, we can now go ahead and figure out which one of these runways is runway 26. And how do I enter into a left downwind for it? Uh, we can see just kind of coming out of there, there's my runway 26 here. In the real world, they never left downwind uh, because there's a mountain there. <laughs> so when you talk to real controllers, I should say, you know, uh, simulated controllers, you have to be mindful of what they're telling you versus what you might encounter in the real world. But the fact of the matter is, especially like I said on VATSIM and IVAO, the, you going through the motions and you saying the terminology, and I'm saying say them out loud. You know, don't actually sit there and type it out. You know, that's a great crutch, but you really got to try saying it out loud. Because as you do it and as you start communicating and as you start making your flight plans more complicated and you're doing that radio piece, not only are you going to have greater immersion, but in the real world too, it will seriously improve your communication skills and it'll improve your confidence on the radio, especially if you're learning. So hopefully these uh, suggestions are helpful. A quick review, again, learning procedures, navigation, learning on familiar airports, instrument approaches, emergencies, communication. Those are all the things I think a flight sim can really help you with when you're learning to fly. Uh, once you're a pilot pilot, a lot of that stuff is still relevant and it's still very, very helpful. You know, I haven't flown in a couple weeks, but it's nice to, you know, get back on a 152 virtually and be able to kind of go through the motions again. And, you know, oh, don't forget where that fuel switch is and things along those lines. But other than that, enjoy.